Welcome to cstarsport.com. Now we're going to take a look at our basic service and see what it can offer you. If you go up here to product and then click on pricing, you'll get a description of each of our service packages. We have the basic package at $99 a year and the advanced package at $399 a year. To get there, we go up to the top of the page. You can see this tab on the top of every page on the website says Find Fish Now and Get Started. So you'll land on the actual map home page and you'll see this warning which says for visitors who are not signed in only old data and maps are shown for demo purposes so I can use maps I can look at different data layers right here in the demo but I'm looking at old data so I want to just be sure that I remember that before I go trying to find a fish on data from a couple of years ago in order to see live data I'm going to sign in which I'll do now and it'll take me back to a plankton chart from today. Now starting from the left up here at the top where it says data layer I'm looking at a plankton chart now I can go to sea surface temperature, sea surface currents which are displayed on top of a gray chart but they show you where the Gulf Stream is moving and where the Labrador current is coming down the coast here on the on the east coast. I'll show you where the loop current is in the Gulf and where eddies are forming up. All important details to know. I can look at sea surface height anomaly which is a good indication of where the upwellings are. I can look at thermocline depth which again shows a lot about upwellings. I can look at temperature at 10 meter depth. All of this information is good to take into account when you're trying to locate fish. So we go back to a plankton, I just want to show you that you can zoom out all the way to 8 kilometer data. It's lower resolution, but when you're looking at a global scale to see the big picture, this is the kind of resolution we use to do that sort of thing. We can zoom into 5 kilometer, 3 kilometer, and then when we get down into the 1 kilometer data, you can see quite a bit more detail. Moving over to date, you'll see that you can look back in time as far back as 5 days. And now under composite, you'll see a number of different days. Now that means right now you're looking at a 25-day composite. You'll see that there are no clouds in the image. Basically, this is a mosaic image of 25 days worth of data. It doesn't mean all the data is 25 days old. The most recent data is available and visible in this image. But what we do is where there are clouds, the satellite can't see through clouds, we take the data from the day before and tile it in and the data from before that and before that and before that and finally you get an image that has no clouds. You'll see that if we go from 25 to 7 days there's a little bit of cloud cover popping up in these areas. If we go to 5 you'll see some more cloud cover and if we go to 2 you'll see some more and now this is quite a bit of cloud cover but there's still a lot of areas in here that are showing good data and the nice thing about this is that you know this data is no more than two days old. This striping here is something that happens from time to time on the actual sensor that's up on the satellite. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad data you just have to again sort of look through the stripes and you can see that there are some plankton edges watercolor changes right around this area here but the stripes do kind of get in the way it's just something that we have to deal with from time to time and GOI oceanographers are constantly looking at ways to process this data in such a way that these stripes don't appear. Now if we come to zero day or near real time this is going to be the most recent pass of course today or yesterday's data was cloudy so there's not a lot to go off of here. Looks like the two-day composite is probably the best option at least in this region. Moving back to the data layer we can go to sea surface temperature and the same thing applies with sea surface temperature. These over here are all clouds that are obscuring some of the data, but when you see hard straight lines like that, that's just an indication that the pass itself did not cover this region. The satellite takes pictures of the Earth kind of like peeling an orange. It does big swaths of viewing at a time. Not every pass covers every area, so sometimes you get a pass that looks a little bit like this, and so you have to come up here to zero day and when you do that you'll see that you have the option to look at all the different passes and we can move this over the land so it's not obscuring anything of course the most recent pass had no data at all 
probably going to be like that for most of these passes. It's been cloudy here on the East Coast for the past few days. Starting to see some data there. There's a little bit better now for fishing down here out of Hatteras. That's all we really need. We can see a good amount of data in the area, and we know that this pass came over head at 653 GMT today, the 24th of April. So that's pretty recent, and uh, if I'm going to go fishing in this area, I'll probably use this pass to decide where I'm going to go. The compositing is only applicable to plankton and SST. All the other data models are not composited in any way. Now you'll notice when I move my cursor around the screen here that I'm getting up, up in this area. Not only am I getting the location of my mouse, but I'm also getting the value of the plankton and the value of the sea surface temperature. In the basic service, these are available to you to make use of in any way you like. You can mark them down in a logbook somewhere. You can use them to decide whether an area is going to contain the kind of conditions that you're looking for. Over the course of time, if you mark off in a logbook where you've been catching fish and what the numbers of these two data layers are associated to good fishing, you'll have an idea of what to look for in the future. And numbers help make a kind of harder analysis than just looking for a certain shade of color. They're a lot more exact, so knowing the numbers is pretty critical. Over here is our temperature depth profile tool. If you click anywhere on the map, you'll see that it gives you the temperature up here at the surface. So that's at you know about 74, 75 degrees at the surface. And as you go down to five meters below the surface, it stays around that temp, goes down a little bit here, so, you know, say about 10 or 15 meters as you get down to 27, or sorry, this is in fathoms. As you get down to 27 fathoms is where it really starts to drop off, so you would assume that that level right there is about where the thermocline is in the water column. And so this information can be very valuable for uh, sword fishing in particular, to understand where the thermocline is and what the temperature is down at the depth. 164 fathoms is the lowest we go. You can make this also go away by just clicking that. That's about it for our basic service. If you want to learn more about the advanced tools that help you generate more value from this satellite imagery, you can take a look at our video about the advanced service which includes a number of analytical tools that are only available at seastarsport.com.